Hi, oh yeah, Martin here. Thank you for joining me. I hope you're all well and you have had amazing creative weeks, weekends and months in your workshop since my last video. Uh, in this video, we're going to be taking a look at bottoms and what we can do to tidy our bottoms up, as it were. And of course, I'm talking about the bottoms of bowls. Now, there are two ways we can turn a bowl. We can either use a tenon and then turn the tenon off to create a nice flattish bottom or we can use a recess and there's something about a recess that to me now I've got you know a few years experience under my belt a recess in the bottom to me kind of looks a little bit unfinished because you turn the piece over and there's a hole in the bottom um, so what we're going to look at today is a really simple and inexpensive way of being able to tidy up your bowl bottoms, particularly if you're using a recess. To show you what I mean, I've got two bowls on the bench just over here that we can take a look at so I can clearly illustrate exactly sort of what I mean. Now this is a bowl I turned uh, a few weeks ago. It's got a really gorgeous deep black lacquer um, finish on it. But if I turn it over, you can see there that we've got a nice, a nice flat bottom. And in the bottom there is my, is my maker's mark really nice really nice piece and when you turn the bowl over of course it's a nice it's a nice little surprise to see that now here is another piece that i turned all oh, months and months and, and in fact i think it's probably a year ago but if i turn it over there's a recess in the bottom now that is basically a hole so in this video i'm going to show you how we can get rid of those holes in the bottom of your bowls now on the lathe I've got a piece of oak. Um, oak isn't my favourite wood um, in the world. I find it generally a little bit boring. Um, but um, it's a good size blank to be illustrating this. So I'm going to be using um, some oak for this. Now I'm going to just whiz back down to the point where... Or rather I'm going to turn this down to the point where... Um, I've made the recess and then I'm going to explain what we're going to do from there on. So cue the music, speed up, speed up the footage and here we go. Let's switch the lathe on, that will help. Now, one thing to remember when it comes to using a recess is when you reverse mount the piece on the lathe, there's actually very little wood that's actually going to be helping that recess um, support the wood. If we take a look here, if we take a look here, um, you can see that I've put the recess in the bottom here, and then I've marked out where I want the foot to be. Bearing in mind that when we turn the piece, the bowl's going to be coming out round this way here. The bowl's going to be coming out like this. One of the downsides of um, working with a recess is the only support is this bit here. And of course, with the physics and everything else like that, everything wants to work to blow the bowl apart. So it's really important that your recess is deep enough and wide enough and, well, the correct width for the jaws that you're using. And also, you have enough wood here to hold the piece and support the piece when it's reverse mounted okay right next up i'm going to shape i'm going to shape the bowl and we'll we'll, we'll whiz through that um, as well and just in case you were interested i'm using a robert sorby 3 8 sovereign bowl gouge sorry excelsior bowl gouge in a um, sovereign handle
Oh, look at that. Oh, can you see that? There is a huge crack running through that piece. Look at the size of that. You see that? It's virtually split the entire bowl in half. I thought I could hear it tapping on the way round. Hmm. That's not very good. So, um, what we'll do is we will just skip past a whole load of stuff and essentially remount one of the bowls that we've already got. So I don't need that tool. Okay, now we've got the recess. We've got the recess here and let's assume that it's all been uh, sanded down nicely. So we can pull the tool rest back up and then we can just give it a little slide in and that will give us a little center mark. So I'm gonna push that in, give it a little bit of a wind in so you can see our center mark there. Now another thing that we can do at this point is put a little bit of decoration on the inside. And to do that I'm going to use a point tool. This wouldn't be my, um, oh, my wood of choice for this project. So what we'll do is we'll take a point tool and we'll put a little bit of decoration. We'll put a little bit of decoration on here. Um, so this decoration here is going to be really helpful for when we um, for when we turn the foot when we turn this bit off a little bit later on. But for now, of course, because we've got a big split in the bowl, I'm going to have to fast forward to the next bit. Okay, so here's the bowl that we've got, or we've, we've just made with a recess in the bottom. But obviously, can't fix it, or rather, we can't finish it because it's got a big split. Uh, running across the middle so we'll look at the the, the piece I did a little while ago um, with the recess in the bottom but how can we reverse mount this bearing in mind that the inside here is nicely uh, is nicely finished we've got no way of holding it and of course not everybody has got the resources to buy a set of coal jaws or longworth jaws or even um, a vacuum chucking system like I'm lucky enough to have here um, now you could make a Longworth chuck out of wood or you could make your own um, coal jaws if you wanted to or what you can do is make a friction drive like this one here now this is uh, quite old um, and what it is is it's basically a very small bulb blank that has been turned with um, a tenon on one side and a round and a dip on the front side and normally they're covered with neoprene or rubber or something like that and then when the bowl is mounted back on the lathe it's held on like that with the tailstock coming into the recess there or onto the um, or onto the the tenon so what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how we can make one of these um, very simply out of a piece of beach. Here's a nice piece of beach. So that's what we're going to do next, which is a between centers or rather a spindle project. So what I've got over here now is I've got a spur drive in the, in the, in the chuck and the live center of course, and I need to get this round and put a tenon on one end and then I'll come back to you. that's close enough. Now what you can do is you can reverse mount it and then we can look at turning and we can look at turning the inside of it. There we are. 
That will do. Now I'm going to give that a very light sanding. God, that, <laughs> this bit of wood split as well. So I'm going to run a little bit of CA glue dirt down in there. A little bit of um, thin CA will sort that out. And now we can take it back over to the bench for the next step. So I need to take it off the chuck. You can either use the, you know, those non-slip draw liner things, or um, you could use, you know, that that really thin kind of um, polystyrene type wrapping wrapping paper almost that you get with uh, new stereos and TVs and stuff you could use that if you wanted to but actually I'm going to use neoprene um, so I'm, I'm going to use three millimeter neoprene that I picked up from a well-known online shopping place and I'm going to just put it face down and then draw around it with a sharpie Make sure if you're buying this, make sure that it is the uh, the self-adhesive stuff. And then find the scissors, and then I can just cut round, cut round that. There we go. So there is a little neoprene disc. Now I'm also going to put a little bit of neoprene on the bottom of this teeny tiny little block. So I'll just kind of cut a little square out for that. And then what I can do is I can peel the self-adhesive backing off there, like that. Oh, that's very sticky. And then line it up badly. Oh, well, it's stuck now. And then I can just press it down all round. Like that, and there we have a nice friction drive. So like back on the lathe, I've reversed, or rather, I've mounted the uh, the friction drive on its tenon, which is good. Now, if you remember, um, we put a little mark in the bottom of the oak bowl before before it split. Now that centre mark there is really helpful for aligning the tailstock back up when we reverse mount the bowl and we just bring the tailstock back up nice and easy straight back in it in its original hole and hey presto let's just turn the lathe on slowly that bowl is now running true again very very helpful but I'm not going to take the foot off this because the bowl is split and it's not going to be safe to turn so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reverse mount the lacquer finished bowl from a little while ago. But as you can see, there's no little mark in the bottom. Which means I need that little block with the neoprene on. And a little bit of time to align the bowl as well as I can so it runs true. So I need to pull the tailstock back out a little bit. Get it as close as I can, kind of by eye. This is where it gets a little bit fiddly. So I'm going to put that in. Whoop! It is a little bit fiddly. It will be much easier if I had done the uh, done a center mark but I didn't because at the time I didn't know I was going to be doing this demo or this video right let's move that now once it's in and there's a little bit of pressure there's a little bit of pressure through the tailstock um, into the actual bowl I can now very carefully slide the bowl 
by giving it some little knocks here and there just to get it kind of centered as best I can bearing in mind as well that I turned this bolt many months ago so it's probably moved a little bit that's looking fairly good right so you can see that little block there is pressing against the recess here which in turn is pressing against the friction drive actually inside the bowl so that now should be good I'm going to have to put a little bit of pressure on it just to keep it steady now also another thing to bear in mind is when you're turning a recess make sure you don't have a micro thin bowl bottom because the friction drive has got a dish in the bottom if you put too much pressure through the uh, through your through your recess if your wall at the bottom of your bowl isn't suitably thick you could quite easily go through the bottom of it and the bottom of this bowl is it's not micro thin but it's um it's thick enough for this right then when everything is in place and you're happy start the lathe up put some glasses on start the lathe up nice and slow and then just very slowly increase the speed and you can see there it's not quite centered but you know I'm not going to panic too much about that because all I'm doing at the end of the day is just very carefully removing removing a little bit of a little bit of the wood here so we haven't got a hole in the bottom now when this is going round I want to leave that's actually really solid giving that a little wiggle that's really nice and solid now I'm going to do this with a spindle gouge and I want to leave a little bit I want to leave a little bit of a foot leave a little bit of a foot and then cut essentially this bit away back to back to the original surface that's just there but not catching obviously this little block here so we'll start that up Three hundred and seventy RPM. Okay, there we go. That's taken that away, and now I can sand that. And remember, we've all, you see we've already got a little bit here that's sanded and finished. And then, oh, and then once it's sanded, of course, you can seal it and finish it however you want to. So I'm going to do, I'm just going to put a little coat of sanding sealer on here, I think. And there it is. There is the bowl bottom. It's no longer got a hole in. Now, if you wanted to, when you were sanding it down, you could add a little bit of detail in there if you wanted to with a point tool or the corner of a skew or something like that. But it no longer has a hole in. And to my mind, this bowl looks much more finished than a bowl with a hole. A bowl with a hole in. There we go. So that's one method of being able to reverse mount your work in order to turn off turn off your recesses now there is something else I need to mention about recesses and that is there is an argument um, and it's a, it's a fairly valid argument that leaving a recess in the bottom of your bowl means that you can remount it at a later date yes that's true to a point however as the wood moves and warps and stuff that that recess in the bottom is going to change shape. It's going to become oval over a period of time. And if the bowl moves too much, it's not actually going to sit properly or even safely in the jaws of your chuck. So there is a potential safety issue there with reverse mounting bowls after a reasonable length of time. So if you, if you wanted to do that, if, if you do need to remount it, I would highly recommend using 
this kind of method um, with uh, just a friction drive and um, a little block of wood just like that with the neoprene on. All in all that cost me less than £10 I think it was um, in order to do that and now even though I've got the coal jaws and the vacuum chuck system I can now very very happily very safely take away the bottoms of bowls um, that have recesses in. So this friction drive method can also be used if you turn bowls with tenons and you haven't got the coal jaws or the vacuum chuck or the longworth chuck. So what you can do is you can still use your friction drive and where you've got your tenon there's probably a little mark left in the centre and you can put that, you can line that up nicely put that in there, again this is a bowl I turned a little while ago and there we go we've got a perfectly a perfectly lined up bowl ready to take the tenon off now what you do when it comes to taking the tenon off all you need to do is nibble down, nibble down, nibble down until you're left with a spigot somewhere around somewhere around your live center here and then you can rev you can take it off uh, you can take it off the lathe and then just hand sand that bit down so this bit this method of reverse mounting is a little bit more tricky than if you spend some money on the coal jaws or what have you but it is very very effective and very very efficient on your finances too so that's it for this video folks thank you very much indeed for watching i hope you found it interesting and inspirational and maybe you'll have a go at making one of these friction drives too there's the bottom of the bowl again it's nice and smooth and there's no hole in it if you haven't if you haven't subscribed to the channel already please do click the link just down here and just down here are a couple of videos that i think you may find of interest it's been great to be presenting again for you apologies for my absence but i hope to see you all again soon bye for now